Great, right, grade 11s. Uh, this isn't another lesson. I'm just going to go through the solutions to uh, one of the assignments I posted because someone asked, interrupted me marking your test, actually. I know it's been a while. But you know, Elsa's been busy, right? So <laughs> now i got more time on my hands. Anyway, um, all right, so uh, let's just go through this quickly. And uh, it says, the first question says, assuming the direction of rotation of the armature and the polarity of the field magnet is okay, indicate what, if anything, is wrong with each diagram and explain why. State the type of generator as well and indicate how one distinguishes the generator type. Okay, so if you look at this, um, first of all, these are generators, yes, okay, I'm sorry. These are all both generators. All right. You know, I'm a morning person. Okay, so look. Um, you can tell it's a generator by this. It's a meter and not a power source. Okay, so here's the deal with generators. The trick to getting the generator is understanding that the way that it rotates is not the way it naturally would rotate. Okay, so in other words, like, if you're thinking here, south repels south, and so this should spin this way. It's correctly spinning. This is the direction of spin. Uh, well, that's not the way it's supposed to go. Remember that the direction it's spinning goes against what it's supposed to do, okay? And that's because someone is forcing it to spin, and this current that's flowing through this coil here is being induced, okay, to flow like this. So let's just read the question one more time, just with that in mind. It says... Assuming the direction of rotation, so I'm going to use a blue pen. Assuming the direction of rotation is correct, okay, so that one is correct. Um, so OK means correct. And the field magnet, polarity of the field magnet, so this is correct and that is correct. So state what, if anything, is wrong with each diagram, okay, and explain why. Okay, so I'm going to erase that little arrow I wrote before. All right, I'm going to take me, my right hand, and if the current is labeled correctly, then I'm going to wrap my fingers around that coil, okay, in the direction of the current. My thumb points to where the south is, but that's what the problem is. This is supposed to be a north. So that is wrong. That's supposed to be a north, and of course, this is wrong too. That make that a south. Now, if I make that change everything else works, right? So in other words, if that's a north, that means that these two guys attract, okay? And the rotation needs to be against the way it would normally rotate. So this is rotating clockwise, but it wants to, it's trying to rotate counterclockwise because north attracts south. So it's actually trying to go this way, right? To oppose you but you're forcing it to spin clockwise, okay? So that's the condition for a generator, that the poles of the, um, of the armature will try to oppose, okay, with a magnetic force, will try to oppose the direction it's being forced to turn. Pardon me. So anyway, and this is a DC motor. I'll use black, actually. It's a DC motor. How can I tell it's a DC motor? It's because of the split ring. Therefore, or sorry, not a motor, pardon me, generator. Okay. All right, what about this one? Well, let's see. Again, it says, assuming that the direction of rotation is correct. Okay. <sighs> Um, and the polarity of the field magnet. Okay, so in other words, that this is correct and that is correct. Now it says state if anything is wrong with this. Well, I take my right hand rule, and again, my fingers, if these arrows are correct, that's these arrows here, okay, pointing like that. If those are correct, then this should be a north. But I've got a problem with that. The problem is, is that if that's a north, okay, if it's a north, north attracts south. 
and therefore <laughs> um, it, it's trying to spin the same way you're spinning it. So you're spinning it clockwise, it's trying to spin itself clockwise, so it's helping you with this magnetic field. That never happens. Okay? So since we have a correct spin, the poles are correctly labeled. It's the current that's backwards. So this current should be this way. And these currents here are incorrect. So the current is in the wrong direction. It's labeled in the wrong direction. The current should be like that. Okay, and that means it's coming in not this way, but that way. We're coming out on the other side. Okay, now this is an AC. It's black again. It's an AC generator. And therefore, oh, because of those two slip rings. Okay. All right. So that's it. Now, how about number two? State and describe what's anything wrong with the diagrams of these motors. So these are motors now. It says assume the polarity of the field magnet and the armature. And the armature are correct. All right. So in other words, this time, what's correct in the diagram is these two poles and these two poles. Okay. Now that means the other things, the other items here could be incorrect. Now there's only two other items. There's the current and then there's the direction of rotation. Now motors spin because of the power supply because it's natural for them to spin based on their magnetic fields. So these two poles, this one and this one, attract and this thing should be spinning, I'm going to label this blue, should be spinning that way because north and south attract here so that's going to make it spin like that. So this thing here is incorrect. The direction of rotation is not counterclockwise, actually clockwise. And let's just check the current in the coil. Using my right hand rule, uh, the current in the coil is looks incorrect. Um, yeah, they just got the current labeled incorrectly. They have it going from negative to positive. So that's electron flow. If we use our left hand, it works. So if this was electron flow, it would be correct. But conventional current should be going in here, around there, and that way, and this way here. Okay? And then out this way. So the current should be labeled like that for conventional current. And then using our right hand rule. So we see that two things are labeled incorrectly. One is the direction of rotation, and two is the current Okay, in the coil. All right, then. Oh, pardon me. Number two. Oh. All right. So in number two here, or in the second question in this uh, motor problem, uh, again, this is correct. This is correct. That is correct. And that is correct. So the poles are labeled correctly. Um, if the poles are labeled correctly, then this thing should be spinning clockwise, which it is, so that's correct also. And the current, using my right hand rule, is pointing correctly. If I wrap my fingers around, my thumb points to north, so it looks like in this one there's no problem at all. This arrow is weird. That, that one's not right. It should be going that way. So anyway, this is actually the same picture. Pardon me, didn't really change anything, but like there's different things that are incorrect. So in this case, everything's okay. So that one's all good. All right. Uh, the town supplied with uh, 400 kilowatts of energy, or 4,000 kilowatts, pardon me. So that's four megawatts. Uh, just let me work out the answer for you. I, I won't write the solution because you know all the steps. Um, divided by... Okay, I got 105 amps. So that's a power loss of 44,000 approximately. Uh, plus four. I get 
1%, approximately. It's 1.0958, okay? So let's round that to one, oh, use a black, 1.1%. Okay, use the domain theory to explain what happens when a bar magnet is dropped. So that's when the domains in a bar magnet tend to be aligned. Then you drop it or hit it or whatever, and they go from that to this, right, where they're random. So this is after a drop, okay? So that's what happens, and it becomes a weaker magnet as a result. Okay, what happens when molten, why can't molten iron be magnetized? Molten iron is above the Curie point. and therefore loses its ferromagnetism at that temperature. I feel like the domains are just, well, I mean, there's just too much heat. So they can't, they can't really um, act like a magnet at that temperature. However, okay, if you let it cool in the presence of a magnetic field, the domains will line up and you'll get a pretty strong magnet after that. Okay, so why must long distance transport involve the use of AC and not DC? I explained this this morning actually in this morning's lesson, but it's because of high voltages, okay, and they prevent power loss, right? which we talked about this morning in the calculation. Calculation like question number three right there. Uh, we use high voltages to prevent power loss, but must step down uh, in the house to prevent arcing. That's where electricity jumps because of its high voltage, it can jump through a wire. Or, you know, if you put your hand near the van der Graaff on a spark, okay, uh, arcing. Okay, um, so therefore transformers are used to step up and step down the voltage, and they only work on AC. So that's a long-winded answer, but that's the answer. All right. Okay, number seven. Last one, guys. It's good, because I need to go to bed. Um, a 400-volt 80-ohm halogen lamp is connected to the secondary coil on a transformer. What is the pri uh, calculated primary current? All right, so you have um, okay. So there's a couple of ways of doing this, but uh, let's do it this way. Okay, the secondary current will use Ohm's law equals V S over R. So that's 400 over 80. And that is five amps. Okay, which I should have known. I'm tired. My cap, that's why I use the calculator there. Okay. Uh, the primary current, um, it'll be I P over I S equals uh, V S over V P. Okay, so just solving for I P you're going to get 400. We're doing that right. Yeah. Yeah, I'm doing that right. So it's going to be uh, 400 divided by 120. Okay, 
and then I'm going to multiply that times 5. Well, I got 16.7 amps. There you go, that's your answer. All right, that's it for this. Have a good night, guys. I'll post the answers to the unit test uh, as well, but uh, not right now. I'll give you a chance to do it first.